Welcome back to Texas by Design. We're glad to have you with us today. We're here for our second episode with Tom Wolliver. Tom, welcome back. Thanks for having me. So in our last episode, we walked through the execution phase of a project. But today we want to spend some time getting your thoughts on the front end of a project. As a firm, we have the opportunity to see a lot of mass plan developments. Uh, and your projects tend to stand out as excellent in their ability to progress through the early phases of development. You tend to be very collaborative with the local and regional uh, stakeholders. And I think it's a real tailwind in helping your projects uh, progress successfully through those early stages. Talk to us a little bit about the philosophy of working with the local and regional stakeholders and why you think it's so important. Well, that's <laughs> the working with your stakeholders. I mean, stakeholders could maybe mean, you know, with people in your own, whether it's your own organization or other partners, but particularly when you get to the, the, the public sector. And I think developers over time in general have done a pretty poor job um, bringing in the public side um, part of the process. And it's, I, I call it more like the, the poker game. And, you know, the developer doesn't want to play all his cards and the city doesn't want to play all their cards. And then next thing you know, you're going through feasibility processes and racking up legal fees. And it just goes on and on and on, which, you know, philosophically the approach is, you know, let's let's cut to the chase. And, you know, what are the goals from the jurisdiction side? And here's what, you know, we'd like to do. I want to do this and see, does this fit with your vision and plan? And then bring those part, bring them as a partner to your team, you know, and go through the visioning or design sessions, you know, with your team. And I found that it's a great way to break that ice and build trust. And it becomes a very more collaborative process. So you basically have really two options. Work with regional and local state stakeholders uh, collaboratively or work independent of those stakeholders. I mean, what are the risks of choosing the latter? Well, it's, it's, I think it depends on the jurisdiction too. You know, it's, it's a lot easier if they want you. Um, if you're not wanted, if you're labeled as hurting, you know, the city from value or population or density or school districts, I mean, we've heard them all, but it, you really have to navigate. And I feel like sometimes you do, when you want to bring them in, you bring them into the tent as, you know, as quickly as possible, let them buy into the vision. And there's some processes that, you know, I've done in the past to kind of build consensus, but, you know, there is risk and you can go in a silo. And, you know, I, I've, I've talked to this, some of my, um, you know, friends on the public side is, you know, a lot of times on the public side, there's ordinances and codes and zoning restrictions written, written on a uh, bare minimum. And with that, you know, so you're working off what I call mediocre. And if you don't collaborate on that, you're going to get mediocre. And maybe sometimes, maybe that's okay, depending where you are. A mediocre development, hey, that's where we want to be. Um, but if you want to go above and beyond that, you need to crack that code and build some trust. Because what you're trying to do on these master plans is we're not trying to get one by on the city. We're trying to improve. And I think that's a a communication or I think there's some there's bad apples in our industry is who really paved the way for or made it a lot difficult for you know when you're trying to add value to the community on projects that we worked with with you on uh, you know several of those projects she walked us through design shreds mm -hmm. uh, for many of our viewers that's a new concept the term design shred uh, do you think giving us uh, a high level of what a design charrette, can you can you give us what that entails? Sure. I mean, I think I've called it a workshop, a charrette, a canvas session. And I think the way that, that I, I approach these things is if you look at the kind of a typical flow, workflow of a development is, you know, you go do your entitlements, you go get your mediocre entitlements. And then you get it to a phase where you close on the project and then you bring the design team, you bring the planner in, then you give them direction and then they go back and do their thing. And then they come back to you and you give them direction and then you bring the landscape architect or architect and it go and you, and you, you stretch this out a long time. But what you're losing on that is you're losing kind of the vision 
and the, and the sales piece of this. So the, what we do in this workshop is we bring in everyone who touches the project. Everyone. So we're talking from your, your planners and architects to you know your, your ad agency to maybe a technology consultant to an arborist, I mean, to a builder. I mean, people who are, you know, a landscaper. I mean, it's that broad. And we have a session. And the, the idea session on the first day that we do these is, one, you want to get the best ideas because you never know where they come from. <laughs> and we often invite the public to this or the local jurisdiction. And maybe they don't, you know, maybe they, they, they're a lot of times I find them, they're awfully quiet. And some of them who are really passionate get into it. But what it allows them to do is take that, that book of mediocre codes and at least, because we have a rule, there's no bad idea on the first day. <laughs> so that book of mediocre, mediocre codes gets kind of pushed to the side and it starts breaking barriers. And it, you know, and it sees that, wow, there's a whole team here. They, you've got talent here. They know what they're doing. And why would any developer spend this kind of money to bring all these consultants? And it does two things. One, it builds consensus with your stakeholders, your partners. And two, you actually get the vision. We, everyone lock, we lock ourselves in the room. And they can't leave. They can't go and go take this business call or whatever. So everyone's forced to collaborate and get a solution. I just did one you know, a couple weeks ago. And I did it virtually for the first time, um, which we did it for a whole week. And I was really nervous about it. I really was because you lose that kind of, you know, a lot of, uh, you know, organic nature of ideas during this. Uh, but I can tell you a week after doing this, I still think it's the best one yet. Awesome. Awesome. I didn't know you could have done this during a COVID-19 <laughs> pandemic. Try to. <laughs> <laughs> so design shreds take a lot of time and effort, clearly. Yep. Uh, you see this effort as a worthy investment, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, but for our audience, what is that return on the investment? Sure. I mean, I think you're going to spend those dollars anyways. You're just spending them over time. So you're just getting all that talent up in the room on the front end. And you're really, you're setting up your blueprint. So your return on your investment is you're saving time. Now, you, you're looking at the numbers, God, I've never spent this much this early on a project. Well, you're building your blueprint. You're building your house plans, right? So this is the house plans of a 10, 20-year community. It's like, by God, don't you want the best architects you know, or builders building your house? So that's the way they approach. You're, you're saving it on time. I, I've, I mean, I've looked at this so many times, and I get this question a lot. And even when I'm on the consulting side, you know, offering this service, like, ooh, that's a lot of money. It's like, well, you're going to spend it anyways. So let's just get the talent, and it just makes it a lot easier. So you save time, um, and then you build consensus. So I do think, I highly recommend it. I, I think the last thing of that charrette that I just cannot emphasize enough, and I've had this conversation with multiple folks, multiple clients, is those ideas and charrettes are only as good as the team you bring under that room. So, you know, a lot of times, if you bring us in great teams and they got egos, or they don't work together, you're just wasting money. You gotcha. know, or you're bringing in your buddy from who did this job and whatever, and you bring them over there, and you know they don't contribute, you've wasted money. So it's that's so critical, and I can't emphasize that enough. Can you talk to us about some success stories that you have coming out of Design Shreds? <laughs> um, I've done two of them. One of them we have, actually, this happened twice, two different projects. Uh, with a landowner, and you're, we're going through this charrette process who's a landowner's involved. They're mostly attached to the land. I mean, it's a legacy land piece. And going through these charrettes, we've brought two to tears, uh, which I thought was pretty good. I mean, that was like, oh, I got the landowner. That's, that's you know, okay. Wow. They get emotionally wrapped up, like, wow, I really can see that these people are taking care of my property, right? I think the other, other great story was. You know, we, well, probably the most contentious one is where, you know, the, I think there was a city, city staff that wanted us. And the council was not really in favor of what we were doing. Um, it was fearful of density or, you know, some of these other things. And um, to flip the script on getting a no way this will ever happen into our community to getting it, you know, approved, that's a huge milestone. Um and also my last successful one, that I love this story too. So I brought landowners to tears. 
um, brought one of our, you know, on a project I was doing, one of my partners to tears. So, that's good. <laughs> well, I'm tearing, I'm tearing up just hearing it. Well, I, I do know that uh, one of the ones that we were involved in with you guys, and actually the, the, the staff was so engaged, they called us, you know, as we were just starting on construction plans and drawings to find out, when are you submitting this? We're excited to see it. Yeah. So that was a great success as well. Yeah. So from your perspective, it seems like a tremendous opportunity for cities, counties, school districts, EMS, fire, police, the list goes on and on, to get engaged, uh, to have their fingerprints on the master plan communities. How do you feel they can best engage in these design shreds to help out their existing citizens in the ultimate development of these communities? Yeah, I, I think, and as I mentioned earlier, um, it's, it's putting that book aside a little bit. So once you push that shield, from your working as a you know public official, and uh, you know you put that you put your shield down a little bit, and I think it allows um, you know allows the public side to kind of understand the process and what it takes. Is really what we're doing is building cities, and you know if you're able to put the book aside, and they can give us honest feedback of what are the challenges, you know, and what are the challenges for you know, whatever uh, department of the city it is, um, that helps us because at the end of the day, that's what we're doing. We're problem solving. So that helps us getting the information versus, a, you know, what's black and white in the book. And then maybe there's another alternative. Ultimately, we may end up going by the book. But it's it helps us understand kind of where they're coming from and what what's the, the pulse of their community that, you know, obviously as a developer, we need to be sensitive to as well. Tom, that was really good stuff. And thank you for joining us over these last couple episodes. Thanks for having me. And thank you for joining us for another episode of Texas by Design. If you've enjoyed this episode, please remember to like this episode or give us a five-star rating. We also ask that you share this episode with friends and colleagues that might find it valuable. For updates on our latest episodes, remember to subscribe to our podcast on YouTube or wherever you listen to your podcasts. Thank you again for joining us on Texas by Design, and we look forward to seeing you next time.